you're watching TechCrunch TV. I'm Colleen Taylor here at the Grace Hopper celebration of women in computing and sitting with me is Dr. Maria Clave, uh, the president of Harvey Mudd College and you're known for so many things but right now uh, Harvey Mudd is huge because you've increased the percentage of computer science majors uh, that are female significantly. Can you give me those numbers and tell me how you did it? <laughs> I'd love to tell you about that. It's one of my favorite things. As a computer scientist myself, it's one of my favorite topics. So, in 2006, we were about 10% of our computer science majors were female. And at the same time, the department was really trying to think about what they could do to change that. And so, they essentially did three things. So. First of all, they read up and they figured out why females, high school girls, don't want to study computer science. And there are three things. Number one is, it's boring. <laughs> Number two is, they don't think they'd be good at it, because computers are a boring thing. Mm -hmm. And number three is, oh my god, they wouldn't <laughs> want to hang out with the people who they think are the computer scientists, because they think they're such dorks and nerds and have no life and all that kind of stuff. Huh. So they thought about that and they read up on what other institutions had done and you know Carnegie Mellon had done some work in the mid-90s, so did the University of British Columbia, which is where I was at the time. And they decided to do a number of things. The first one was they decided to make it really fun. So they took their intro course called CS5. They changed to programming Python, which has a couple of good things about it. Number one, it's much more forgiving than Java or C++. Mm -hmm. But number two, it's actually used in industry. So if you try to teach with something called like Alice or Scratch or any one of these sort of easy to learn programming languages, you're not going to get a summer job. But you can easily get a summer job programming in Python. Yeah. So that was the first thing. Um, they used an easier programming language and then they made all the problems that you work on ones that actually apply to some area of science and engineering. And so it might be robotics, it might be modeling the spread of a disease, epidemiology. They also gave the students choices about which exercise they could do. So suppose this particular unit was on recursion. Mm -hmm. There might be a robotics problem, there might be a bio problem, there might be a physics problem. Okay. You didn't have to do all of them, you just pick one. Mm. You're gonna learn the same thing about recursion no matter which one you do, but it gives the students a sense of choice. And so helping students feel a sense of ownership is really good. They also um, introduce a lot more teamwork because once again, we know that feeling isolated is not a good thing when you're learning something. So feeling that you're part of a community and you don't have to work by yourself is really helpful. That's one, make it fun. <laughs> Number two was, let's make it not scary. Let's make you feel like you're gonna do well at it. So we divided the incoming students into two groups for CS5. One is called CS5 Gold, one is called CS5 Black. Mm -hmm. Those are our school colors. Okay, <coughs> I see. Black and gold, actually, and white. And, you know, when I think about those two colors, I think CS5 Gold would be the one that was the cool one to be in. Well, that was the one for people with no programming experience. Mm -hmm. And so, all of a sudden, everyone in your class with you is going to be learning it from scratch. And so you're not going to feel intimidated by the guy sitting a couple of rows away who seems to know everything. Yeah. And then we put the kids who knew a lot into CS5 Black. And that turns out we have some small number of kids, maybe 40 of them, who really knew way too much for an intro CS class. And so we put them in something called CS42, which is the combination of CS5 and CS60. And you have to find a number between 5 and 60. Mm -hmm. Of course, it would be 42. Everyone <laughs> knows that. Of course. OK, so that was the second thing was streaming. Um, the third thing was they wanted to prove that there were lots of people who love computer science and technology and who aren't dorks. Well, actually, as my daughter says, everyone at Mud is a dork. She goes, <laughs> Mom, how would you know what a dork is? You're a dork. Dad's a dork. Yannick is a dork, her brother. Yeah, so, but anyhow, we started bringing first year students to Hopper. The first year, we took 15. Um, last year, we took 50. This year, we only have 40, and they're not all first year students because we started to realize that we needed to allow more of our upper class students to come as well. Hmm. But what we know is they come to Hopper and they see all of these people who 
are females at all kinds of stages in their career, and they're cool. There's dancing. There's all kinds of swag. Why wouldn't you want to be at Hopper? Right. So, um, and so essentially what happened was CS5 became the most popular course in the first semester. Wow. Everyone has to take it unless you're taking CS42. Then they worked really hard to make the second course in the sequence, CX, CS60, just as much fun. And they would persuade people to say, oh, I'll just take the second course. Right. And then they tell them to take the third course, <laughs> CS70. Well, by the time you've been through CS70, you can get hired by Google as a software developer. You get a great summer job. Right. And throughout all three courses, which are, yes, challenging, hard work, but really fun, all of a sudden, your classroom has got just as many females as males. Why wouldn't you be a CS major? Right. And now you have 40%? We have 40%. We have 40 we've been at 40% since about uh, 2010. Um, in our junior year, in the strict CS major, we're 48% female wow. this year. But I should say there are three um, CS majors, or CS math, CS math bio, and CS. CS is by far the biggest, and that's the one that's 48%. But if we average over the three, the three of them, it's only 44%. Only 44. Only but 44, still a huge yeah. increase from the 10% that it was just Absolutely. seven years yeah. ago. And why is it important to have diversity in computer science? Some people would say, you know, what was wrong with Harvey Mudd before when it was 90% male CS majors? If that's who's interested, that's who's interested. I've heard that question many times in my career. Yeah. And I, th I think there are three answers. So the first answer is, we have an economic crisis in this, Canada, in this country if we don't get more, if we don't produce more computer science graduates. We just do. I mean, the, the need in tech companies, but not just tech companies, everyone, Walmart, um, retail stores, I mean, just everything. They really need to hire more software developers. So if, you know, if most of the female half of the population isn't going to do it, it's a big problem for the US. The second reason is these careers are great careers. They pay well. They're really flexible. If you like to travel, you can travel as much as you want. Right. Um, they allow you to work on really important problems so you can have a big impact. Why wouldn't we want our females to have those job opportunities? But the most important one for me is this world has a lot of problems in it, really important problems. And whether we're talking about climate change or healthcare or poverty, literacy, a lot of those solutions are going to involve technology. And one of the things we know is that you get better solutions if you have more diverse teams working on them. So it's not just wanting more women to do it. It's more African Americans, more Hispanic students, more poets and football players and artists and ballroom dancers and whoever. <laughs> it's, we need everybody. And the world is going to be a better place if we could get everybody involved. And so you said on stage yesterday with uh, Sheryl Sandberg and Telly Whitney that at Harvey Mudd you have this thing where you say if you had a magic wand, what would you do? Um, but you didn't answer that question on stage. The other stage. I didn't answer that question. So, okay, I'm going to wave my magic wand. <laughs> I want the world of science and engineering to be a world that embraces everybody who pa has passion and ability and interest, whether they look like the dominant group or not. In some places, the domin dominant group is white males. In other places, it might be Asian males. Um, in the Arab world, I've just found out that there are probably more women studying computing than there are men. Wow. But whatever the dominant group is, I don't want people to have to be part of that dominant group in order to be embraced in order to be nurtured and supported. And I think we're gonna be an incredibly exciting place doing incredibly exciting technology developments if we really get a much more diverse community into the tech community. So that's my magic wand. My magic wand is when I wake up tomorrow, it just really doesn't matter what you look like or what other things you're interested in. If you're passionate and hardworking and have ability, people are going to give you all the support you need. Well, Rhea Kaveh, thank you so much for talking to us. It's a pleasure.